And so we're going to do ray diagrams, but today we're going to look at lenses. So yesterday we looked at mirrors, but when you look at lenses, notice something different. When you're looking at the lens, where is that pencil that you see right there? Is it on your side or is it on the other side of the lens? See how it's on the other side of the lens? This is going to change the real versus virtual side with, with ray diagrams here. So when we're, once again, I'm kind of trying to, trying to get you ready for the math. When we're dealing with rate, when we're dealing with the math, if something's virtual, if the image is virtual, it's going to have a negative. If it's if it's real, it's going to be have a positive. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. But just a reminder of some of the variables, the same variables as before, except you'll notice just a few differences. Um, the object, we've got the object, the distance of the object to the to the actual um, lens, the distance of the image to the lens and we're gonna have, so, so now we, we have, when we do a lens, we'll often do a double, whatever this ends up being and you'll see that this is convex. Uh, we'll often just do like a double-sided one, but really we're looking at the front side when we're trying to name it and do different things. But we have the distance of the object to the lens, distance of the image to the lens. And then we'd have, there's this focal distance. With lenses, they have a focal distance and it has to do with the shape of them, it's pretty much halfway to the center of, if you made this, if you took that front curve and you went ahead and made a circle, the center would be right there. The focal distance would be halfway to the center of the curve. So there's there's this, um, and this is gonna be important for some of our calculations. It's also gonna be important for our ray diagrams today. And then we're gonna have the principal line again. So just like yesterday, we had that line right down the, the, the center, that's gonna be the principal line. So the real versus virtual side, like I said before, we are now, when the object's over here, light is supposed to go through through a lens. So this is, we just switched out which way the real versus virtual side is. When we had mirrors, remember, light's supposed to bounce off a mirror and come back. So this was the real side. And once again, thinking about the, the signs for math tomorrow, we switched out, we're gonna switch out the real versus virtual side. And the reason why is just think about it as light off a mirror, if this was a mirror, it's supposed to bounce back. It goes to the real side, light off of a lens is supposed to go through and it's gonna to go to the real side. So where light is supposed to go is gonna be the real side. And that will lead us into the math, a little bit more of the math tomorrow. Uh, so let's look at the types of lenses. So you do need to know the names for lenses. And sorry, it has to be a little bit confusing. They have two names for each lens. First of all, if you have a lens, take a look at this front side, just like yesterday. What do we call it when it bends away? Was it planar, concave, or convex? It was con, does it cave towards the object or does it cave away? If it caves away, it's gonna be convex. So just looking at this front shape versus where the object is, don't look at the back shape. The back shape is just there, just, just ignore that. Um, I could have a flat, if I wanted to, I could have a flat shape, but just for the sake of doing the ray diagrams. Really, we're not looking at the second shape. This would be a lens. Look at the front shape. It's bending away, so it's gonna be convex. And then another thing, it's gonna be based on the way that the light bends. Notice how the light comes in and then it bends inwards. It converges light. So if I went ahead and had light coming over here too, it would also converge light. And some of you may have used a magnifying glass to, to maybe start a piece of black paper on fire. Have you ever done that before? The magnifying glass, the reason why magnifying glass works, and this is what's in the back of my head when I'm thinking about, is it a converging or diverging lens? Is when I use a magnifying glass, it focuses, it converges the light onto a spot. Some cruel people may have burned some ants before, uh, but other than that, you might have just, you know, tried it out. Most people at some point in time tried it out. You converge the light using a magnifying glass and you went ahead and, and that converged light all of a sudden became very, very strong and, and heated up a piece of paper and maybe started a fire. So when I look at this and I'm thinking about what this shape of lens is doing, I remember I've used a magnifying glass many times and it has that shape right there. And I know that that converges, that converges the, the light. So it's a converging light because it sends light to the center towards the principal line. And then there's a, um, okay, so there's a, the convex lens, a little bit more about convex lenses. And we're gonna see this and you're gonna notice because we're gonna do ray diagrams. We're gonna do ray diagrams where we're gonna start a ray diagram with the object there or there. I mean, there'll be different spots where we start the object, but this is, if I, this is like a complete ray diagram. If I started the object anywhere, 
there's going to be this is the image scene and that's represented by this blue blue arrow let me start it over i don't know why it's not re redoing and redoing initially you see the object getting bigger and bigger and bigger this is that blue arrow and then at some point in time you're going to see the object disappear and after that you're going to see the object come back in and get get smaller and smaller and smaller can everybody see the animation and see what i'm trying to do with my my animation the object is this it doesn't the object doesn't change its, its size but the image is changing its size it's going to be magnified, either enlarged or reduced, based on where that object is as the object moves to different spots. And so we're going to learn how to do this ray diagram um, and then answer, analyze the question, is this image bigger, smaller, is it inverted? Um, this is where if you had, uh, if, if you are, if you are, uh, if you're farsighted and you have glasses to read near and you hold them away from your face at some point in time you would see depending on where you have where you have those glasses nearsighted it's going to be a different different type of lens nearsighted is going to be a not a convex lens but a concave lens and nearsighted you would only see one image but if you are farsighted and you can't see near as well you hold those glasses away from you you're going to see an object that's upside down you'll see if you hold it too close you know how like i mean some people think it's funny if you take a magnifying glass you hold it really close to your eye you know what I'm talking about? You have like this huge eye, you have this person's head and this eyes like this big because you're holding a magnifying glass next to it. Well, that's this thing right here. That's because you see the image. Of, if you have if you have the lens closer than the focal length, you end up seeing your eye really big. Um, we're gonna just look at the ray diagrams and learn how to do that with a with a model. And then tomorrow we're gonna learn how to do this mathematically. Okay, so the next type of lens is the concave lens. And just remember like before, remember the cave part. You look at only the front side that's why i have it bolded in this animation concave is bending towards you and the way i remember that it, it's a diverging lens this is going to be important because it's going to determine when we do the ray diagrams which focal length to go off of but it's a diverging lens because it's going to send light away the one that's not a magnifying glass is going to be diverging and diverging means that light's going to be directed away from that center point away from that principal line so concave and then diverging is based on the way that light is moving after it hits that lens. Um, just another note, this property of lenses is due to refraction. The refraction, maybe write that down somewhere on the side of the page. Lenses, lenses, all lenses work because of refraction. That's a diffraction, refraction. As light goes through the lens, it bends because it's the light slows down. And so it, so it bends, it bends a certain way. It would bend, um, it bends a certain way based on light slowing down. And that's the property that allows you to, if you have glasses or you use magnifying glass to, to see an object differently, to change focal length. And that works a little bit more with your eyes. So you can see everything like the way you're supposed to see it. Okay, so this is a concave lens. And maybe highlight this and, and try to remember this. Concave lenses are only going to produce one type of image. And remember how I said before, virtual images are always upright? Same thing. If it's virtual, it's always going to be upright. And so this, since this, this image, if you take a look, you can't take, the only way that I would change the image is if I could take the object and pass this point right here. I can't because that's behind the lens. So the, no matter how close I get to the, the lens, this this object, so sorry, this image, the image it's produced, it's always going to be smaller. It might get a little bit bigger, but it's never going to be bigger than the object. So it's always going to be reduced. It's always going to be virtual because you're going to. It's always going to be upright. This thing never changes as this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It never gets, it never actually flips or does anything else. But so a concave lens is only going to produce these kind of images. And then. Um, and it's, since it's always virtual, so it's the projector that I'm using over top. Everybody see that? So the projector that's projecting this over here on up top, this has to be a convex lens. It has to be like a magnifying glass because the only way that I'm ever going to project something onto a screen is if that screen was on the real side. So I would need a real image in order to project that and, and project that. So just in case you ever see that question, this one the image always forms over here. So I'll never be able to project it on the other side. Just like a camera, a camera works by projecting an image onto a onto a some sort of 
film, you need to be able to project that. If, you, if that image is not projected on the real side, it's never gonna, it's never gonna work to um, to project it like project it like a, the projector I have here or a camera or anything that would need that. So that finally gets us to the ray diagrams. Let's go ahead and work a couple of these. And so when you do a question, when you're asked a question, the images or the Im the object is this far away from the lens. The image shows up here, or the the it'll tell you the focal length. Well, you'll start drawing this diagram. For the most part, I'll give you a diagram today, but um, you may have to draw a diagram yourself at some point in time. Um, so we're going to look at this concave ray diagram, and these are the steps, but I'm going to walk you through the steps, so I'm not going to go and harp on this slide, but if you get lost a little bit later on and you're trying to find the, the page with all the steps, I think you have it on your notes too, um, you know where to go. You can find this, but I'm just going to walk you through these steps since I know them by heart. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, just just walk you through them going off of my what's in my head. And after you do all this, after you do everything and after you do this ray diagram, the whole goal is to take a look at that image and compare it to the original object and then come up with what is it? Is it is it upright? Is it enlarged? You know, what 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 is it? And if it's upright, is it virtual? Is it real? Those kind of things. So let's start off with this one. I believe this was the first one you see in your notes. Is it am I correct? I know last year I had a couple of errors. I think I tried to fix them. So if I don't, just 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 let me know and I'll kind of kind of get back with it. Okay, so this is, is this a concave or convex lens? Concave, yeah. And would this lens send light outwards or would this light lens send light in, inwards? It's gonna send, it's diverging. So that's gonna be something that you need to know before you start. So the first ray, let's go ahead, it's gonna be just like before. Let's go ahead and take our straight edge, and I want you to go ahead and straight parallel to the principal line, and you want to get that ray to go right there and stop about in the middle of the lens. So if you're at home without a ruler, use a cell phone, or use something with a straight edge so that you just can use to line up these things. And so, okay, just to talk about a little bit more about these diagrams, sometimes you see this little prime symbol next to F. This just means the virtual focal point. And this is just double the virtual focal point. This is the focal point. You're gonna determine based on if it's converging or diverging, which one of these to line up. And since this is diverging, we expect the arrow to go out this way. So go ahead and this spot right here, and this spot right here, you wanna line these two up. But so you want to line this spot up with this spot up, but you want to draw. So lens light is supposed to go through, supposed to go through a lens. So you're going to go towards the, towards the real side. So you're not going to go. Don't do go. Don't go this way. The most mistakes I see are people going this way. Line up the ruler this point and this point, and then go ahead and once you line up that ruler, go ahead and draw that line out and draw an arrow on that on that refraction. I'm not going to call it reflection anymore because it's a because it's a lens. So light goes through and it always goes to the real side. With lenses, we drew to the real side, which was the, with, sorry, with mirrors, we drew it to the real side, which was the other way. But with lenses, we're gonna draw to the real side because light's supposed to go through. So that's the first step. The next step is pretty easy. Let's go ahead and go back to the object. Are you all ready for the second step? Let's go back to the object and let's go ahead and let's draw it straight from that object, the same spot where we started before, straight through and keep on going. Straight through and keep on going. Straight through and keep on going. Straight through the, the center of center of the lens. So at the center of the lens where the principal line meets the center of the lens and then draw, have, make sure you have arrow tips on these two. And so we have the two refractions and with these two rays, once again, there's billions and billions of rays, but with these two rays, we can go ahead and we can look at it. Are these two rays ever gonna come together on the real side? And they're not. So we are gonna have to take these both to the virtual side. We'll take them to the virtual side. Let's go and take this one and let's go and take it to the virtual side. Now we're gonna have to go to the virtual side because they're not gonna come together on the real side. And this one, we don't even have to draw in because it already has, it already has a marker in there. So we take it to the virtual side and we don't have to take this one to the virtual side because it's already there. And you see this point right there where the two, the two rays meet? That's where you're gonna draw your image. And since it's above the principal line, since it's above this line, the arrow tips can be facing up.
And now you have everything you need to analyze the object versus the image. Is the image bigger or smaller? Is this arrow bigger or smaller than that? Smaller, right? So we're going to call it reduced. Is the image upright or inverted? See how it's the same? It's upwards too. It's upright. And it's virtual, but once again, like I said before, if you know it's upright, you know it's virtual anyway. Can't be, can't be real and virtual. Or sorry, real and uh, can't be, it had to be uh, uh, inverted if it was real. And so that's how you do this. So we're just gonna walk through all the different examples, all the different types, and then you'll do your, your worksheet where you'll get the extra practice and then that's what you'll put in the, put in the Dropbox. And, and I, don't want you, I don't want you doing the worksheet right now, even though it might seem easier because it's a bigger form. Uh, I want you to do a little bit more and get a little practice at these in a few minutes when we're done with all the different examples. So virtual upright reduced. So go ahead, where it says describe the image produced, just make sure you put down virtual upright reduced. And then once again, just make sure you understand based on what I explained, make sure you understand what that means and how you just analyze your, your, your drawing. Okay, so what you notice now is we went ahead and we went ahead and moved the, the arrow. So the object now is past this focal point. We moved it a little bit closer to the, to the lens. And we're gonna do this exact same thing. Just go ahead and you can go ahead and get ahead of me if you know what to do. Exact same thing, first ray, straight down, straight. And that wasn't exactly perfect. Right down to the center, right down to the, from the, from the arrow tip to the center of the lens. It's the same type of lens, it's still diverging. So you're still gonna go off of this right here, this virtual focal point. And you're gonna send that ray outwards. Once again, lined up with this focal point, that's where it came from this point and this point lined up, but it, it's a lens, we're going to the real side. The real side is gonna be through the lens, where up here would have been back. And then we'll do the second ray just like we did before, line up that top of the arrow with the middle where the, where the lens meets the principal line, center of the area and just send that ray straight through. Only dry arrow tips on the refraction because that would keep on going. And once again, these two are never gonna come together. So just go ahead and take this top one and send it back, line it up right here with that and just keep on sending it back. And this is gonna be your results. And then you're ready to draw in after that you're ready to draw in the arrow just like you did before. And so, like I said before, this kind of, this concave lens is only gonna produce one type of image. Doesn't matter where it's located. If I moved it back here, if I moved it up here, doesn't matter where it's located. It's only gonna produce one type of image. It will always be reduced. It will always be upright and it'll always be virtual because that's the virtual side. Or just because it's upright. If it's upright, it has to be virtual. And so in analyzing the image, this is what you should write down. Virtual upright reduce, once again, understand based on looking at the diagram, what that means. Let's get a feel for it. Because you do a ray diagram and then you'd answer a question. And then anyone that, if it's A, B, C, D, there'd be something that's wrong and you'd be looking for these three things. We good? We ready for the next one? Okay, so let's go ahead and this is, no matter where the object's placed, just like I said before, take a look, no matter where the object's placed, this image is always gonna be smaller. It's always gonna be virtual. It's always gonna be upright. It's always gonna be reduced. It might be less reduced, but it's always gonna be reduced. So that gets us to, oh, it gets us to a question. Which diagram is drawn correctly? I believe I have that on your page. Yes, I do. Once again, you're gonna have a multiple choice test. So I'm probably not gonna ask you to draw a ray diagram, but I might ask you to draw a ray diagram and analyze it, but more likely you'd have a question like this. And which diagram would be drawn correctly based on your knowledge right now? Should be B. Everybody good with that? Any questions there? 
Um, the be difference between C and B. Good question. Um, oh, it's where this focal, where is, this one's going through, where it's going through the second ray. So it's close. It's close. So it would still form an uh, image that would be you can answer, but yeah, just slightly off. Good, good question. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at converging ray diagrams, and it's pretty similar, except for now we're going to converge. We're going to converge this this light, so we're going to be going off of the the real focal point and not the virtual focal point. So let's do the same first ray. Go straight ahead until you hit that lens. Oh, okay, straight ahead until you hit the lens, right in the center. Stop right in the center. But this time we're going to line up with this focal point because it's gonna, it's a, uh, it's a converging lens. And we're gonna send that ray, so that second ray is gonna go through there and put an arrow tip on it. So whereas before we weren't actually going through the focal point because we're always going to the real side, this one, the focal point happens to be on the real side, so we actually do go through the focal point. And the second ray is exactly like before. Go ahead and line this, the tip, with that point and draw a straight line, straight through the center of the lens, right there. Put an arrow tip on the end. Oh, no problem. Um, you can watch the, um, yeah, you just watch the video as well, like later on if, if you need to catch up on something. Am I doing an okay job explaining this? Do you understand what you're doing? Okay, so now um, another thing to note is if you have a, a ray diagram, and so see how this the, the two rays converge right there. If you ever have a ray diagram but the principal line's not long enough, just extend out the principal lines. It's not really a thing; it's just a, it's like a, almost an invisible thing. So, so if I draw it in a, a diagram, it's just because I give you a, a guide, but I, you know you could extend it out. And so, like I said before, if the ray ever if rays ever converge, so these two. If you follow these arrow tips back, see how you follow them back? Just like you followed them back before. When you followed them back before, right here, they didn't. They they never came together. You first ask yourself, did they come together on the real side? And they didn't. So we went. We had to go back through the lens. Whereas here, they. If you follow them back, they converge on the real side. So we're never going to have to go to the virtual side. So that's the difference between the convex lens and the concave ones that we saw before. These ones converge on the real side. So as soon as you see these two arrow tips, that's why the arrow tips are important. You follow them back. As soon as they, they converge, you're pretty much, you pretty much know where the image shows up. And since it's below the principal line, if you ever end up below the principal line, it's always gonna be inverted. The base, the bottom of the arrow started on the principal line and will always end on the principal line. So the way you can tell if it's upright or inverted, and, and if I have a multiple choice question, of course, I'm gonna have one of these where the arrow is drawn this way and that would be incorrect. So, you know, it's, if it's below the principal line, it's up, it's upside down, inverted. And if it's above the principal line, once again, when I say it, where it converges, where these two rays converge, then that's gonna be um, inverted versus uh, upright. And so when you analyze it, it's real. So it ends up on the real side, it's inverted. And this is a tough one, because if you draw this just slightly different, it looks like it's a different size. But in reality, if you drew it, if you're at the, the if you're double the focal length, you're going to see exactly the same size image, but it's going to be upside down. So this is where the math is a little easier to do, because it's just a little bit off with the ruler, and you're going to see an image that's slightly different. And you can probably look at your paper. It's really hard to do it perfectly, even with the ruler, because I use a PowerPoint to make my rays. It was much easier, but if you're analyzing, usually this, if it was in a lab or something like a normal year, um, I would, uh, when, when you got this answer, if you were slightly off, I'd usually give you credit for it because it was really hard to, to get that perfect. We good here, any questions? Okay, let's go ahead and go through the other ones. This one's a weird one, okay? This one, when you have a, when you have a convex lens, where you have an object right at the focal point. Let's go ahead and do the same. It's the same process, but there's gonna be something unique. Go ahead and draw that first ray from the arrow tip to the center of the lens, and then follow through the refraction, just like we said, the con converging lens, the convex lens and the converging lens. Go ahead and follow that ray through from this point through that point, 
and finish it off. Draw an, drawing an arrow tip on the end. And then do the next ray just like you did before. So we're not changing the, the way that the rays are drawn. We just, it's just the end result that's really weird here. So when you get to the second ray, you do just like before. You send that ray straight through and you put an arrow tip right there. And what you're going to notice is these two rays are parallel to each other. If they're parallel, are they ever going to come together on this side? No, they're not going to come together on either side. And so if you take a magnifying glass, what you'll notice is that when you, you can tell, and if we were doing a lab, we'd be able to tell where the focal length is based on where the, where the image disappear, where the image would disappear. So you'd see something upright, and then all of a sudden it would disappear, and then it's going to become inverted after that. So this actually forms no image. So no image is formed. But at that focal point, and once again, if you're slightly off in your angles and how you do the ray diagram, you're going to, you're going to think it does converge. But at the focal point on a convex, convex lens, this is where the image is all of a sudden switching around. Are you ready for the next one? Let's give you a few more moments to finish that off. Once I see the pencil start moving and you looking up, I'll, I'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one, let's go ahead. Now we just passed up the focal point. This is, this is another weird one. This is the most common test question because it because you have to really think through it a little bit further. Uh, let's go and draw the ray diagram. I, you noticed how I already added the extra line because I think I needed it. We'll find out. We go ahead and start the same way. We're going to do everything exactly the same way. Center of the lens, parallel to the principal line, straight through to the middle. Then go ahead and finish it through just like we did before through the focal point. Once again, because it's converging. If it was diverging, we would have went outwards and we would have lined it up with the other one. We'd still draw, we always still draw to the real side. We'll always go to the real side. We'll never go to the virtual side unless we need to. And then the second ray, just do like you did before, straight through the center. And this is where you, you might be drawing into another problem because I try to save paper. If this ever happens, just draw through, through the letters or whatever else you have. Notice how these two, are they ever gonna come together on the real side? They won't. So let's go ahead and line, go ahead and take these arrow tips and put your ruler on those arrow tips and let's take both of those to the virtual side. Let's take the first one, oh, I, that was kind of out of order. Take the first one to the virtual side, take the second ray to the virtual side, just going off the arrow tips, not going off of these lines on the virtual side already. Taking the arrow tips, going back, and you'll see this is the image that's gonna form. And so if you need to draw through something else, draw through something else. Let me change for the sake of my PowerPoints later on. So I don't see that too early. That animation, that should be the last thing I see. I can't draw that until I do everything else first. Okay, so the order would be right through to the focal point through the center of the lens and the principal line, sending it back. And then finally, based on that, we can see where the two rays intersect. And since it's above the principal line, it's going to be upright. So it's upright, it's also on the virtual side. And so that gets us all our information. It's enlarged because once again, looking at the object, it's bigger than the object, it's enlarged. It's upright because the arrow tips are facing upwards. It's virtual, first of all, because it's upright, also because it just happens to be on the virtual side. Light in the lens is supposed to go through. It's not supposed to come back. Your brain has to make it come back. Your brain makes completes the picture for you, so you see an image because it wants to see an image if, if, those, if those rays will convert. They don't, they don't have to always convert on the real side. I wouldn't be able to project this image. I wouldn't be able to project this image because the only way I'd be able to project, project an image is if it showed, if it came together on the real side, it doesn't. This comes together on the virtual side. So, so your brain's an amazing organ. It can do the, it can do the putting together for you.
Okay, and so this is the overall picture. Depending on where the object is placed, you're going to see different forms of images. You notice how the image disappears, and all of a sudden it comes back, and as you get closer and closer, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And if you have a lens and you move it from far away, closer and closer and closer, you'll see this happening. You'll see whatever you see in the lens, you'll see initially when it's really far away, when the object's far away from the lens. So if you're looking at something through a lens and then you're looking at something like a wall far away, initially it's going to look like that. It's going to be smaller, upside down, and at some point in time it's going to disappear and it's going to flip and it's going to get, it's going to become really big. And then as you get closer and closer and closer, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so let's go and answer a few questions and then you have the rest of the period. Let's see if I did an okay job making it. Okay, so yeah, you have the rest of the period to um, to work work through this. I may I may move the math to Monday and give you another day, so especially the students who are testing right now to kind of catch up on these lessons. And so you might want to bring something in tomorrow. Might not be a bad idea. We're not in a super rush, so I might I might keep the math for another day and then give you a chance since I only gave you ten minutes in class and have students right now a lot of them are taking tests. I might make tomorrow just a day where you can work on the ray diagrams. And anybody who missed class the past two days, you'll go ahead and have a chance to, um, to catch up and go through these lessons, which I will have recorded for you. Okay, so which one is the concave lens, A or B? Nope, I didn't answer the questions. Which one's a concave lens? And you're going to take a look. It's going to be B. Which one is a convex lens? Of course, if B is the other one, then it's going to be A. Which one would converge light, A or B? A. Which one would diverge light, A or B? Once again, if the other one's converging, it's gonna diverge. And so this is what you have to ask yourself that before you're doing a ray diagram, because you need to determine which focal point to go off of. So when you have a lens like B, you have to go off to this focal point and draw the, the, the refracted ray outwards, at least the first refracted ray. And when you have a convex lens like this, you're gonna to have to have the first refracted ray going in because it's gonna converge instead of diverge like B would. 